Hello Year 11, it's Miss Bailey here. If you can have the worksheet ready to be completing as we move through this video. So your first activity is to match up the keywords to the definitions. Pause the video whilst you have a go at this. Okay, so the answers are as follows. An element is made up of one type of atom. A compound is made up of two or more different types of atoms which are chemically bonded and a mixture is made up of two or more different types of atoms or compounds which are not chemically bonded. And what we're going to be looking at in this lesson is pure substances and mixtures. So to begin with, I'd like you to be considering what does pure mean? Where might we have heard this word pure before? So pause the video whilst you have a think about this. So in chemistry, we define a pure substance to be one which is made of only one substance. So we have four images here. Can you have a go at considering whether they are pure or impure? Pause the video whilst you have a think about those. So the first one is pure because there are only green circles present. And similarly for the second one, that is also pure because there are only purple circles present. Our third image shows a mixture of the green and purple circles and therefore it is impure because there are multiple types of substances present. But with our final one, this is actually pure and that's because we have one type of substance present. That type of substance has been made of joining green and purple circles together by joining a green and a purple circle together, we have made a new substance and we only have that type of new substance present. So there are only green and purple circles joined together. That is the only type of substance we have in that picture. And so coming back to look at that distilled versus C. So our distilled water is pure water. So it only contains H2O. Whereas our seawater, as well as potentially having some sand in it, has lots of minerals that have been dissolved in that water, which we can see here. So sodium, calcium, chloride, magnesium, sulfate, all of these different ions which have been dissolved in that water. So that seawater is not pure because there is a mixture of different substances present. So what we're going to have a go at doing is completing a Freya model for the term pure substance. On your worksheet you have an example of this. So our definition for a pure substance was a substance which is made of only one substance. And for a visual illustration there we can have our circles of only one type. They don't have to be in a lattice. They can be randomly arranged as we've seen in those previous examples. So an example of a pure substance, something which just contains H2O. So distilled water. Um, we could talk about oxygen. So if we have um, a canister of oxygen gas. Whereas some non examples of things which aren't pure substances, so we said seawater, because that doesn't just contain H2O. We could talk about air, which contains oxygen, but it also contains other gases. We could talk about alloys, which are mixtures of metals, such as steel. So this is how we do a Freya model to help us understand the definition of this term. We didn't have to do just one atom, we could have chosen to do a compound such as water, but just making sure that all of those particles are the same so that we can show that it is a pure substance. So here my circles are hydrogens and my shaded ones are my oxygen so that we have H2O being illustrated here. So here you can see lots of different types of substance but it is very easy for us to separate them. We could sort them out into red, green, orange, yellow, purple, 
just by simply picking out the different ones of different types. So it's very easy to separate the different substances and mixtures. May not be as easy as separating out Skittles. Um, but here are some examples for you to have a think about how you would separate each of those. Pause the video whilst you have a think about this. Key definition here, which we'll come to in a moment, is that they are not chemically bonded and therefore they can be easily separated. So with the coffee and coffee powder, we would filter it. So this is filter coffee. The insoluble um, coffee powder stays in the paper whilst our coffee solution filters free. Pasta and water, this is a similar to filtration, but we would use a sieve or a colander in order to separate those so that we retain the pasta and get rid of the water. With our water and clothes, it's evaporation. That's our process there. And then iron is magnetic. So we could use a magnet to remove the iron from the salt. So your activity now is to complete a Freya model for the term mixture. So just like what we did for the pure substance, if you can now have a go at completing this for a mixture. So pause the video whilst you have a go at this. So what we're now going to take a look at is how we can determine whether something is a pure substance or a mixture. So we can use boiling points and melting points to help us with this because for a pure substance they are fixed points so we can specify the temperature at which they would melt and boil. So for example for water we know that our melting point is 0 degrees celsius and our boiling point is 100 degrees celsius and that's recorded in a database and we can do that for other substances and compare whether something is pure or impure by comparing it to the database value. With our mixtures, they melt and boil over a range of temperatures. So rather than being a specific point, it could be between minus two and two degrees. So that would be impure because there's a range over which that process is happening. So with our melting and boiling points, they are also changed in their position because the impurities disrupt the particle arrangement that's happening. And so that affects how easily it is to melt and boil the substances. So our melting point is lowered. So we move lower down the scale, whereas our boiling point is increased. So that means that for an impure substance, we are gonna be in the liquid phase for a wider range of temperatures because we're lowering it at one end but raising it at the other end. So your activity for this is to identify which of these cooling curves is for a pure substance and which is for a mixture and explain the reason for your choice. So pause the video whilst you have a go at this. So we can apply this to something which we might have had to do quite recently. So adding salts to the roads during freezing weather. So we do this to stop our roads from icing over to make them safer for us to travel on. So by adding salts to the roads, it's going to form a mixture with the water before it freezes. So using what we know, can you explain why we do this? So pause the video whilst you have a go at this. So formulations, these are, are a sp special type of mixture. So they are mixtures which have been designed for a specific job. So some examples of everyday formulations are on this slide. So you can see here, we've got um, some cereal, which is a mixture of different substances. Um, we've got tablets for medication. We have coffee. We have pencils. We have paints. We have cosmetic products. So all of these contain mixtures of different substances where each part has been put together for a specific reason. So for example, in the cereal, they've chosen to include um, raspberries and blueberries because that's what the consumer wants. With our medication, um, 
often you might have them coated in something to make it easier to swallow. Um, there's also fillers because actually there's only really 5-10% to 10 of that that's actually the drug itself. Um, with paint similar to the cosmetics we've got the colouring, we've got a binder so it attaches to whatever we're um, drawing on so our canvas or our paper and then we've got a solvent to help that pigment and the binder spread. Here you can see 22 different ingredients make up that one shampoo. So all of these have different functions in it. So food colouring, the actual soap part itself, the fragrance so your hair smells nice, um, making sure that we are killing any bacteria and fungi. Thinking about what we have looked at this lesson, there are five questions for you to answer. Thank you all for watching and see you next time.